Hello friends, welcome back to Huawei AS. Welcome to the discussion on daily MCQ. Today is 19th of November 2021 and now we are going to discuss 5 MCQs based on the current affairs. So let's start. And guys, um, the MCQs what you are providing you know, are free of cost. These MCQs you can attempt in our Telegram channel and you can also download this PDF at free of cost from our Telegram channel. The Telegram channel details are there in the description. So do go and join and check it. And also we provide a lot of uh, value addition material in the Telegram channel. So you can just check it over there. Now let's uh, begin the discussion. The first question, consider the following statements. First one, Article 217 of the Indian Constitution states that the judge of a high court shall be appointed by the governor in consultation with the Chief Justice of India and Chief Secretary of the State Concerned. Second one, the territorial jurisdiction of a high court is coterminous with the territory of the state. You have to choose the correct option, A1 only, B2 only, C both 1 and 2 and D neither 1 nor 2. The correct option is B2 only. Because if you see, according to Article 217, the constitution states that the judge of the high court will be appointed by the president and not the governor in consultation with the chief justice of India and the governor not the chief secretary. Okay? So that's why the first statement is wrong. But the second statement is right which says that the territorial jurisdiction of a high court is coterminous with the territory of a state. So the second statement is right. So B2 only is the correct answer. So recently senior advocate Saurabh Kripal could be the f India's first openly gay judge. After deferment for four times, the Supreme Court Collegium has finally recommended his name as the judge of the Delhi High Court. So that's why this is a landmark thing in the Indian um, judiciary. Okay. So if you see the High Court, High Court basically the judge of High Court is appointed by the President in consultation with the Chief Justice, the Governor of the State, and the case of appointment of judge other than the Chief Justice, the Chief Justice of the High Court also will be consulted, and uh, the Collegium will consist of. Uh, Will, the collegium will consist of the Supreme Court judges, the senior most Supreme Court judges. It's a three judges collegium. But for the judges of the high, for sorry, for recommending the judges of Supreme Court, there will be a five judges collegium. Okay. And the collegium is led by the Chief Justice of India. Right. So this is all the information. And you have some more extra information. You can just pause and go through it. Okay. Right. Now let's look at the second question. Second question is. Consider the following statements with respect to Renewable Energy Certificates REC, the Renewable Energy Certificates. So these Renewable Energy Certificates first first statement says REC is a market based instrument market based instrument to promote renewable sources of energy and development of the market in electricity. Second statement in India REC's are traded on India Energy Exchange and Power Exchange of India both. You have to choose the correct option A1 only, B2 only, C both 1 and 2 and D neither 1 nor 2. The correct option is C, both 1 and 2. Recently, Ministry of Power and New and Renewable Energy Resource has, guide, has released the guidelines which allows thermal generation companies to set up renewable energy generation capacity and supply power to consumers under existing power purchase agreements. The new guidelines allow thermal generation companies to set up renewable energy generation capacity either by themselves or through developers by open bids and supply power to consumer under the existing PPAs. A power purchase agreement or electricity power agreement is a contract between two parties on which generates uh, on which the generation of electricity and one which is looking to purchase uh, the electricity they will be there. So this RPO is mechanism wherein which the state electricity regulatory commission are obliged to purchase a certain percentage of power from the renewable energy. So here the promotion of renewable energy will be happening because of this. The RPO is being implemented throughout the country to create demand for renewable energy. And there are various targets for the renewable energies. So the current targets, if you see under the long term growth trajectory, states have been asked to increase the proportion of power procured from renewable sources to about 21.2% of the total procurement in 2022. Right. And if you see there are energy exchanges, power exchanges, in fact, they are India Energy Exchange IEX and Power Exchange of India Limited. These are the energy exchanges and the price of the renewable energy certificates is determined by market so it's based on the market demand and it contained it, it contained between the floor price that is the minimum price and the maximum price so the market price will vary between the minimum and the maximum price which is determined by the central electricity regulatory commission okay now let's look at the next question the third question which among the following institutions are considered to be the bulwarks of democratic system in india democratic system of government in india first one supreme court Second one, Election Commission. Third one, Finance Commission. Fourth one, CAG. Fifth one, UPSC. You have to choose the correct option. A1 and 2, B1, 2 and 5, 
C1 to 4 and 5 and D all of the above. The correct option here is C1 to 4 and 5. It is the Supreme Court, Election Commission, the Controller and Auditor General and UPSC. They are considered as the bulwarks of Indian democratic system and not the Finance Commission. The Finance Commission is once, sorry, the Finance Commission is appointed once in every five years. Okay. So recently, Prime Minister unveiled the state the statue of Sardar Vallabhai Patel at the Office of Control and Auditor General of India to mark the first audit divas, that is 16th of November 2021. So that's why this was in news and it is celebrated as a mark. It marks the historic origins of institution of the CAG. It aims to highlight the rich contributions of CAG to boost transparency and governance in India. CAG will ensure that the governance, sorry, the transparency increases in the system because it is one of the important institution which ensures that the finances of the government are managed well, the finances are taken care of well. Okay, the CAG, if you see, the head of Indian Audit and Account Department, uh, uh, it is created in 1753. The CAG is guardian of the public purse and controls the entire financial system of the country at both the levels that is central and the state. It is one of the bulwarks of Indian democratic system and the other being the Supreme Court, Election Commission and UPSC. Okay, now let's look at the fourth question. So this fourth question is with respect to the Bhutan movement. So Bhutan basically means land donation. Bhutan. The first statement, it was a violent movement attempting to force wealthy landowners to mandatorily give a percentage of their land to the landless people. Second statement says it was initiated by Dr. by D.K. Carvey, who was a staunch Gandhian in 1951 at Pochampali village in Telangana. You have to choose the correct option. A1 only, B2 only, C both 1 and 2 and D neither 1 nor 2. So the correct answer here is D neither 1 nor 2. Because the Bhutan movement is not a violent movement. It's not a violent movement. So the first statement is wrong. Second statement, it was given that it is initiated by D.K. Carvey, but this is wrong. This is not initiated by D.K. Carvey. It is initiated by Doctor, sorry, Acharya Vinoba Babe. Acharya Vinoba Babe initiated this, started this in 1951 from the Pochampali village in Telangana. So recently, Pochampali village was in use because it is named as one of the best tourism villages by UN World Tourism Organization. That's why this was in use. The best tourism village uh, by UNWTO pilot initiative aims to award those villages for their outstanding for their outstanding achievement in terms of rural destination and showcase good practice in line with the specified nine evaluation areas. Pochampali is about 50 kilometers from Hyderabad and it is a town in Algona district of Telangana. So the Pochampali is also famous for saris. The Pochampali sari, the Pochampali ikat. Okay. So you, you also have GA tag for the Pochampali saris. Okay. And if you see about the Bodhan movement, so Bodhan movement is nothing but the land gift movement. It was known as Bloodless Revolution, was a voluntary land reform movement. It was initiated by Acharya Pinova Pape in 1951 at the Pochampalli village, which is now in Telangana, Telangana state. And it is known as Bodhan Pochampalli. So the movement attempted to persuade wealthy landowners to voluntarily give a percentage of the land for the landless people. So that's why it is a, it is a non-violent movement. Okay. So, Bhutan acts were passed that the states uh, acts were passed by the respective states that the beneficiary had no right to sell the land and they have to use it for non agricultural and they cannot use it for non agricultural purposes as well and they can use it for their own purpose, okay, for agriculture and all, right? So, now let's look at the fifth question. The fifth question is the ACER annual survey of education report 2021, sometimes mentioned in media, is conducted by. A. UNESCO, B. NGO Pradham, C. Niti Aayog and D. World Bank. You have to choose the correct option and the correct option is B. NGO Pradham. Pradham is the NGO which will release this uh, report called ACER report. Okay. So recently the 16th edition of the ACER report was released. The survey analyzed the impact of COVID-19 on learning. It showed an increase in dependence on private tuitions and an absence of ready access to smartphones. There was an unprecedented jump in the government schools, government students, and a 10-year low in the private school enrollments. A clear shift from private to government is observed, but that is not because of the enrichment or you can say evolved, uh, you can say the development of government schools. Rather, it is because of the reduction of income. It is because of the less income of the people during this pandemic. Because of the less income, only people have moved to government schools, but not because of the development of government schools from the government side. So, a fall in private school enrollment from 28.8% in 2020 to 24.4% in 2021 was seen. It has reported a growing dependency on private tuition classes. Students, especially those from poor families, are dependent more than ever on the private tuitions. 
during the recent national achievement survey of central government teachers and field investigators across the country reported that the primary grade kid struggles to make sense of questions to test the basic comprehension and numerical skills a series of nationwide survey of rural education and learning outcomes in terms of reading and arithmetic skills conducted by ngo pratham for the last 15 years and as 2020 is the first ever phone based and phone based acer survey and it was conducted in september 2020 the 6th month 6th the 6th month of national school closures and guys uh, that's it for the day before i leave a small information that we are providing vision mains test series summary and vision mains 365 summary you can know about more of these things from our telegram channel the telegram channel details are there in the description so that's it for the day i'll see you again tomorrow with five more mcqs till then keep studying and stay tuned jai hind